What's going on, guys? Car livery. Guess what? It's my client's first car. And guess what she got it with? Car livery. We delivering the car to her. First day she got a license. First day she got her car. <laughs> I got my license yesterday and I got my card today. Thanks for car livery. Hey, yo, new book from Lakey out now. Go cop that. Yo, listen, man, I got some major dudes that be checking out my Instagram reels. You heard? My Instagram reel game is serious. So if you out there and you need to promote something, a business, a clothing brand, an artist, a new mixtape, new album, video, whatever it is you out there trying to push, you might want to be on these Instagram reels I'm throwing out here, baby. You already know I got the YouTube promo popping. But if you need that double dragon, that Instagram and YouTube promo, get at me. As always, holla at the bro Life Through Galleries if you need a photographer in New York. Classic magazine cover I was on. A lot of heavy hitters in this picture. That's a whole fact. At this time, when I turn my left to my left, this nigga coming full throttle face down with the knife. Hit me in my eye. Now, I'm thinking that he got my eye and I can't see. Because the way he hit me, the skin latched over the eye. And I'm a real guy, man, real shit. If I knew that I could see, I would have hard ass out that kitchen. But I'm thinking that they already got me in my eye. What I got to lose, you see what I'm saying? First of all, I mean, my, my story is like this. I'm gonna straight open up and tell you straight like this. I was a problem child, man. Uh, the streets literally raised me, man. Uh, I started off as an ignorant person, learned the streets as being ignorant, became intelligent through the prison system. I was a problem child growing up. Uh, couldn't read and write. You know, I was easily influenced with the streets. So every little thing that came my way, I thought I was in the wrong and I had to protect my honor. But I, in all actuality, motherfuckers were scared of me, but I didn't take it in that way. I always thought that a motherfucker was trying me with wordplay and I named, I'm thinking because niggas know I couldn't read and write. So I was very ignorant in, 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 in that subject of the streets. So I had to like, feel like I had to prove myself with a lot of crazy shit. But um, I started off around the age of 11 or 10 in the streets. Um, I moved from Beverly, New Jersey to Burlington, New Jersey. Burlington City, yeah. Burlington City. And what happened was I moved out to this little hood thinking these motherfuckers is like with me, but they are in actuality against me. Uh, I started off, I got caught with a whole bunch of weed for this girl named Cynthia. Um, one... When I was 10 years old, I went to the youth house around this time. Uh, the system gave me another chance. Went right back out, got caught with a gun at the age of 11. Went to Jamesburg. Came, when I went to Jamesburg, I was taking a lot of L's because I'm around motherfuckers that's from North Jersey, Central Jersey, things of that nature of different hoods that I, I couldn't realize that I was doing. And um, I had to fight my way through Jamesburg. So when I get to Jamesburg, I'm running to guys from around my way that I heard of, but finally get to meet. So I'm meeting these guys, and I'll ask you why these niggas scared of me. I don't know that they scared of me, but now I know. I take throttle. I'm when I'm tell you, I took throttle to these niggas being scared of me. I ran with that shit. So when I ran with it, I have came home and, and niggas start, started speaking my name about how I was in Jamesburg. So now I take the opportunity to run with the shit I was doing. I catch my first knockout when I was 11. 
that gave me so much of a thrill that I did that. That now I'm I'm just punching on motherfuckers. So what you was locked up on self? You was locked up in Jamesburg, ten years old, and all of that. Yeah, I was ten years old. They was, I, sending, I was a, they was locking ten years old, ten year olds up in Jersey like that. Yeah, they was. If you was a problem, they 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 they, they knocking you off. They That's made they up. making you. So what? Jamesburg so, got a whole little a whole little uh, wing for 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 mad young kids. Yeah, it was college ten. Mm. So. Cottage 10 was all for the outlook of motherfuckers my age. But you gotta remember, I was a little motherfucker. Like, they called me Little Gary. LG stand for Little Gary. But niggas sort of throwing na- uh, my name around like I was a motherfucking piece of paper in the hat. So, at the age of 11, I come home on parole. I come right back to Jamesburg for a violation. Now at this time, I take straight off. My fault, I had interrupted you before when you were saying you caught your first knockout. Yeah, I caught my first knockout when I was in Cottage 10. These niggas from Jersey City tried to jump me. And me being crazy enough to understand that I ain't scared of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? So. These niggas actually got the compound on smash, these niggas. A lot of older people scared to deal with me. But I don't understand this point until I turn about 12. When I turn 12, I come home, start pushing a little weight for my cousins and I'm from Trenton. So now I'm getting about 300 to 400 grams of yay. So I run with that shit. No bullshit. I run with that shit. Now I'm serving all the motherfuckers that I look up to. I get caught with a gun. I get caught with this gun. I don't realize that this shit put me into the fed range. Nah, when I when, when I first came home, they pushed me out of the way and sent me to Epson. They call it Ep Dog. And I literally take off. When I tell you I take off, I take off. They sound, they sound off and let me know that I'm going to the feds. Now, I don't know what the feds is until I get there. Now, I remind you, all together I did 16. I don't see none of my 20s, none of my 20s on the street, none of them. None of my 20s I see on the street. None of them. So now I'm, I'm an absent. I'm like, damn. But on some sneaky down low shit, I'm crying. My, gra- my grandma, I'm giving me the game for us. Yo, you in absent now? Come on from absent. And go straight to the feds. This shit is scary, bro. Long story short, I get to the feds. I'm literally around motherfucking killers and motherfuckers just getting major money, but I don't notice until they test my hand. Now I'm gonna back up a little bit. And the situation of me going through the feds. I get to test the water. And when I mean test the water, I test the water. I start off in Farrington, which is in Jersey, Bristol, New Jersey. I get all the way down to Epson, leave Epson. I go to Farrington, come back from Farrington. I go to Lewisburg. Now I'm testing the waters. I go to, I go to, I go to Lewisburg. Get into a brawl down there. They, they sat me on the bench for a minute. Now I'm going. I'm, I'm waiting to go to Epson. I'm thinking Epson is like, you know, I, I passed through Epson. I'm that nigga. But on actuality, I'm around these motherfuckers with knives and all types of knives. They making out of toothbrushes, combs, all this shit. So now I end up stabbing a motherfucker down Epson. 
Well, what happened with me and him is that my girlfriend, I was married at the time, I was Muslim. I took my Shahada and I, and I ended up, you know, learning how to read and write. I met this sister. She uh, was bringing the bomb in for me. No bullshit. I'm the youngest nigga on the compound bringing in weed. The Muslims tell me straight up, if you don't stop selling weed, we're going to run you up top. Now that word up top is stand for PC. You think in my caliber and the way I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to let these niggas check me in? Hell no. I get into a big brawl with the Muslims. <laughs> At this time, I realized that it's a lot of politics involved. I kick up from the politics. I fight the, I'm fight. i fighting the Muslims. I'm fighting this nigga named Malik from Chicago. We get into a big brawl in the hallway, but that's the only way that they can get me into the hole if they try to punch on me. So we get to fight him. Lumped him up in a short period of time. Quick as hell. Beat the brakes out of Malik. Now, come, me to come to find out that Malik is the enforcer for the Muslims. Don't care about this nigga enforcer. So they run me up top. It's time for me to come out. The hole. No, I ain't coming out the hole. These niggas flatlined me. Told me straight up, I can't come out. So the lieutenant come back there and get my information. So long story short, I end up fighting my league. Go to the hole. They put the fix in on me. I couldn't, I couldn't come out the hole. It was a new jail opening called Victorville, which Victorville is a P, is, is a Victorville is a, is a USP, United States Penitentiary, and I mean it's a penitentiary. Niggas is like on go, but I'm telling you these niggas on go. These niggas on go. Now I got extinguished. My life, for their life, you feel me? Now, I get, the, I get down to Victor. I'm a cook in the kitchen, one of the top grade. It's only like 400, but 400 is on the whole compound. So now, I'm realizing that I'm the shit. I fight these niggas called, you know, the White Floors and GDs. They stay together. They stick together. I beat their homie up that was a big time enforcer. Nigga named Louie. He from um uh uh he from um Alaska. This is the first time I find out that Alaska is on go. Alaska niggas on go. I ain't know that. They got a surprise for me. I'm coming at the kitchen. <laughs> They had a car though, had, like Alaska had their I own mean, car. They had a car. They had a car, bruh. And literally, these niggas was running on go. They vice lords and GDs. So I meet the nigga Platinum. He trying to get me at the situation because what they do is they have a meeting outside in the yard to see what's going to happen to you that day. You're either going to stay on the compound or they decide right in front of you if they're going to check you in or not. So. For me being so much of a problem, these niggas called a green light and said that I'm going up top. Oh, no, I ain't. I'm not going up top. I get to fighting these niggas. These niggas stabbed me seven times, bro. And it's four niggas that got knives and I ain't got no knife. Because 10 minutes prior to me going up top, these niggas, the nigga that I'm fucking with, Malik, took my knife and supposed to sharpen it. This nigga runs on me, lock himself in the kitchen. I can't even get back there. Now I gotta turn face value to I gotta save my life. Nigga stab me in my face. Nigga stab me in my neck. Nigga stab me in my arm for me blocking one of the Jones. Now, we on super go. Nigga from Baltimore, nigga from Virginia, and one nigga from Philly. Shot me some bell. These the niggas from Philly and Baltimore did what? They shot me some bell. Like if it wasn't for these niggas, I'd be, I'd have been in the creek. But I was I was a Chinese man with a free soda, one gone. Because these at this time I'm losing so much blood, and the police don't hear the little violence going on with us. So I take a tray 
and smacked the one nigga named Pirate, white boy, with the knife over the fa- over the face of the tray. At this time, when I turn my left to my left, this nigga coming full throttle face down with the knife, hit me in my eye. Now I'm thinking that he got my eye and I can't see because the way he hit me, the skin latched over the eye. And I'm a real guy, man, real shit. If I knew that I could see, I would have hard ass out that kitchen. But I'm thinking that they already got me in my eye. What I got to lose, you see what I'm saying? So when he came down, hit me over the eye with the knife, I rub my eye and see that I can see, but it's too late for that. Cause these four niggas is, they got knives. So I'm rumbling. Now, I turn around and punch the one boy pirate. He falls into the trays and all the trays fall. Now the police get when there was going on. I am so happy. I am so happy, bro. I swear to God, it's like these niggas threw honey on me and they was bees stinging me. Now the sergeant is telling these niggas to put the knives down. This one nigga faked me out like he's putting a knife down for me to lay down. Once I would have laid it down, they would have still worked me. So I kept fighting, kept fighting. I lost so much blood that I passed out, but I'm still up. They put me on a stretcher. They took me to the infirmary. They, they called an outside doctor to come in to patch me up. In the time and the process, they patch me up. The doctor can't stop the blood flow because there's more than one stab wound. They shoot me out to the hospital by helicopter. Now, I need blood transfusion. So they call my, they, they get in contact with my family to see can I take this blood transfusion and that it saved my life. So my grandma agreed with it. My grandma agreed with, 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 the, with, the, with the blood. Now check this out, we get to the hole, everybody that was in the incident is in the hole. So we all go to wreck together. At this time, I can't move my arm or nothing. I can't turn my neck a certain way because of the swelling. I get outside to the wreck yard, they put me right in the cage with these two niggas again. This nigga got a knife tucked in his ass. When he, when he went in his ass trying to get the knife, I peeped it. I jumped, I jumped right on, man, bro, last, I jumped right on this nigga. The knife fall, I picked the knife up. I worked this nigga. When I tell you I worked him, I thought I had a body on my hand. I worked him. His man ran to the gate to try to get up out of there, screaming his seal name. Now, at this time, New York niggas is beefing. The nigga Kenny Supreme and them nephew Prince and them, they beefing with another section of Queens. All over this 50 cent shit. So they get the rumbling down there with that shit. I'm caught up in the mix of that. So now they put a transfer in for me to go to another USP. I go to another USP. I go to one of the worst USPs in the world. I went to Hazleton. I get to Hazleton. My name is already on the wall. Niggas got an APB out on me, bro. No bullshit. Now, niggas saying if I survive this APB that they got on me, it's green. It's a it's a green light, but I made it a red light. I was kicking up so much, bro, like a donkey, that they called the hit out. They called it off because in all actuality, they losing good soldiers fucking with me. I just stabbed one nigga in the face and the eye. My get back. Uh, go to the compound. My cousin down there. I make that nigga fight with me. He acting like he don't want to fight to hell. We get in the room one night. I ain't gonna lie. I jumped on his ass. I'm saying to myself, if he ain't with me, he against me. This is my first cousin. I works him in the room. The room bloody as hell. I don't work this nigga. My grandma and them beefing with me now because I done stabbed my cousin all up. But it had to be done. You see what I'm saying? Now I get to another open compound, which is called Lee County. Niggas slacked off on me. You feel me? They slacked off on me. Niggas like, man, let that nigga be. He a little burnt out. But I'm just fighting for my life to get home, bro. I got I got a daughter that's pregnant now. But what happened you know, when in, you got to Hazleton? As soon as you got there, dudes tried to try you? Yeah, as soon as I got there. As soon as I got there, niggas knew who I was. They, they already know I ain't a rat. 
And why that green light was on you? Cause of cause of what vice lord beef or because of the because of the vice lord beef. Exactly. You 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 know the story right offhand. The vice lord beef carried all the way on, all the way on until I got back to a to a to a to a medium, bro. So all the way until I got to a medium who, again. That's who approached you when you got to Hazel Ten. It was vice lords. Yeah. It was it was it was the boy named. But he, he he called a board member. He approached me. He was like, listen, he said, this is what he said to me. This was shook me up, but it made me feel proud. On some violent shit. He called me out to the yard, walked with me by the by himself. But the whole time, it's eyes on me, watching me, my every move. Right? I get there. He said, yo, man, they call you free, Freeway, LG, whatever they call you. That's what he said, straight to the bone. He said, look, man, the beef is, we calling the beef off with you, bro. We losing too many soldiers with you, man. You, you you're not caring how you handle your business. You're going hard. So I'm asking you, can this beef be called off? And now I'm like, you know what? Fuck them niggas. I'm gonna keep going. You know what I'm saying? Because now I just don't got no sympathy for these niggas. I hate them. You know what I'm saying? It went too far. They're gonna stab me in my eye and hit me in my neck. All types of shit. I got a calluses on my neck from the stab wound. Big shit, big as hell. So, this will slow the beef down with them niggas. The old head name. Catch on what's going on. I'm getting introduced to motherfuckers playing like I'm their friend. We go in the room and drink some white lightning or some smoke some weed together before they leave that motherfucking room I'm stabbing them my word bro I'm stabbing niggas so now I get with my New York homie he like yo you got to slow down man they gonna kill you bro you gotta slow down you gotta slow down at this time the nigga Big L that fuck with the nigga world in them that already came in my room to talk to me numerous times I'm throwing the block up on this nigga cause I really don't wanna talk you feel me? So now I'm fucking with the nigga from LG Projects. LG, the LG Projects. Um, the nigga name was um, it was World uh, 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 Mega, Megatron. So I messed with the nigga Megatron. He like, yo, look, man, you need to calm this beef down, man, because you riding in a car with us. And these niggas just stabbing niggas because of you, man. Real shit. We, we got to find a way for you to settle down, LG. So I told a nigga, look, I just want to fight. Every single one of these niggas that's vice lords and GDs are one-on-one, -on -one and we can call it quits. I fought four niggas that day. I fought four niggas that day to get my respect. In all actuality, bruh, some real shit, them niggas respected me already. They respect me from a knife ago. A week and a knife ago, they've been, been respecting me. But I got a date to come home now. So I got to slow down. Now, I got a young boy that I'm messing with from Colorado named Nutcase. He don't go. They killed him. He coming to see me and bring me some sandwiches. They just catch him in the hallway and they kill him. That's another situation that I'm saying I got a ride for my man. You know that that smoking on Dookie and smoking on all that. Man, we was doing that shit before them niggas started rapping about it. Because niggas, it's, it's a game of survival. And a lot of motherfuckers don't know that this fed shit, USP is serious, bruh. It's the worst jails in the world. So now I'm just staying waiting of how we going to uh, survive this shit with Nutcase now. What fucked me up is Nutcase mom called me out to visit. Because she knew I'm the only one that knew the story. Bro, give me some ice in here, please. So I catch her on the Nutcase mom. She tell me this like this. She said, listen, Gary, I don't even know you that much, but I love you. The way that you kicked, she said it just like this. The way you kicked up for my son. Show me that you a real friend Because I was fucked up Because yo On some real shit last This nigga had 45 days to go home And they killed him 45 days to go home All I wanted him to do Was check in To make it home I said no case Let's check in Go up top for a little bit man And then you come 
out for a week later. Don't tell Nick that you coming. You leaving? Just leave, bro. Off the compound. Just go. He didn't. He was hard headed. I cried like a baby. They caught my man selling sandwiches and killed him. That put another dent in my bed. Then he cripped. And they, and they wondering why, you know, he they under the same flag banner. So they wondering why he ain't rocked me to sleep yet and keep trying to kill me. And he kept it real. He told them niggas, man, it's my man. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't kill it, trying to kill my man because he a real nigga. Whoa, whoa. Just for the incident of him not trying to hurt me, they killed him. He said, he told them niggas straight up, nah, man, I'm, I'm going out for my man. So he said he was going out with my man. So he going out for me. I got, a, I got, a, I got a big love for this nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? This nigga going against his banner for me. And it all started out with some kitchen shit. I was the head cook. He was the second cook. And he really, really was riding for me, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you think I'm not going to ride for him when they killed him? So I catch the nigga for that had a play in it. His name was. I call him in the hallway. I didn't get him like I wanted to because he ran. But I told him niggas, every time I turn around, if I catch one of you niggas in the hallway or anywhere I catch y'all, it's nice play. Y'all gonna either hurt me or I'm gonna hurt you. And that's what happened. I caught the nigga coming out the mess hall. Working for the police outside the mess hall. I worked and that's the one I told you I stabbed in the face. I went to court for that shit, bro. They gave me another three years. I ended up appealing that shit and beating it. Now I'm, I'm in my way and this shit gonna f*** you up. I'm in the halfway house. I'm from Jersey, but I'm in the halfway house of Philly because that's where we go. Don't you know that shit carried on to the street? I'm on the pass one day, coming back. Never forget, Dunkin' Donuts, get the cold coffee. First time having a cold coffee in my life. Niggas roll past in the car and started blazing at me and this girl. That shit, I didn't know that that shit was gonna carry on like that. That shit carried all the way on to Northeast Philadelphia, bro. And the reason why was because of the beef I had with the GDs and the Vice Lords, and I stabbed a nigga from Philly. So I came home. So what happened when they started blaming at y'all, though? When they started blaming, they hit the girl. And I ain't going front. I left her. I got up out of Dodge. I, I, I left that bitch. Because they, cause they was doing some big shit, bro. And when I left her, this going to mess you up. Her brother. Her brother wants some salt now. Because I done left this bitch. You want me to think I'm going to stay and shield myself because your sister? I just fucked her one time. Nigga, I don't know her from a motherfucker. I just met her by the water fountain. Nigga, I didn't take a sip of that shit yet. And, and, and these niggas shooting at me and her. They was trying to get their man. Nah, let me get one of them blunts. <laughs> it, it wasn't even like that, bro. I wasn't going out like that. I just came home. My daughters wanted to see me. It's their first time really hugging me. My daughter's grown now. And I'm saying to myself, she asked me in the hospital, why did I run? Bitch, I ain't no bulletproof vest. I just ain't, bro. I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking they shooting at you for setting a nigga up or something. But don't ask you why that beef was because of me. When we get to Jumar that Friday, I found out that the beef was all over me. And that's what they shot. No, I ain't know from the beginning that these niggas was on my top like that. So now I hold ass. I ain't no sucker shit. That's some being a man shit. I got up out of there. Niggas, nigg, nigg, man, I, man, who, he who runs to fight another day, bro. Fuck that. I hold ass. Now I get my uncle to bring me a yammy. Now I'm hiding my motherfucking gun back and forth to the halfway house because I can't go in the past without me looking over my shoulder. That beef started when I went to Jumar and it ended when I went to Jumar. So now everybody from Philly is feeling me. These niggas that's meeting me, knowing me. Now, this nigga can get on a post and, and, and say that nigga ain't lying. I meet Beanie Siegel. Let me get a light, please. I meet Beanie Siegel. He was like, yo, you the nigga that's got all the beef out here that's coming from the feds. I'm like, man, listen. I need to know if you know this one nigga named Kabani Savage. He like, yeah, I know Bonnie. I know Sa I know Bonnie. I'm like, yo, tell him LG when to get at him, bro. Whoa, whoa. Man, sure that they got the word and they came flushing down to the halfway house to get me. And I 
told him, look, I know you got the streets on smash right now. I need you to stop this beef, man. Because I'm a little shook going outside the motherfucking halfway house every day. With the past, they making me go out on the past. I'm getting out on the past. These niggas shooting at me. So that shit happened more, the, it happened more than one time niggas blaming at you? Yeah, hell yeah. But I was in the car with my right-hand man from Burlington. Niggas tore the car up. That nigga moved to California. He like, I'm out of here, LG. I ain't even sticking around these niggas that know me no more. So they, they was laying they was laying for you when, when they knew you was going they was gonna force you to take a pass, what, to go out to look for jobs and shit? Yeah, bro. It was a girl that worked in there that was under their wing. She used to tell him everything. When I was going on the pass, what time I was coming back, everything. I finally found out this bitch that's working in there is setting me up the whole time. So now I'm released from the halfway house. I never forget this day. The Phillies went to the World Series and won. She was walking to a car and I was going back to the halfway house. I crept up on that bitch and hit her right over the head with the gun. Because I find out that she was the problem that, that was solving everything. This bitch quit the next day. Put the son of the police on me, all types of shit. But she's the reason why these niggas trying to kill me. They paying this bitch all this type of money, doing all this crazy just to get to me. This bitch calling me in the office, faking me out, trying to give me phone calls to see when I'm doing this. She hearing everything. So now I find out. I said, to get this bitch. I squatted on this bitch for two hours. She was walking to her car. I walked right behind the bus over here with that fucking gun. No bullshit. I ain't playing. Made the bitch quit. Bro, I was going through it between that time. This is the time route. 207, 208, 209, bro. 209, that's when everything started to fall the place, falling back. Hey, these niggas really was trying to take me out, bro. And I never knew what beef was until you rule less than 30 deep, bro. That shit was deep. And I'm being real with you, bro. And niggas that hear this gonna come on and know about it, and they gonna respond like, yo, that nigga ain't lying. I was going to, I was going through a war, bro. Without me really knowing it, bro, going and, through and a you war with these Philly you niggas. Had to, you had to stay in that particular um halfway, halfway house? house. Yeah, they. I was trying to get shipped out to the to fifth of Laverne, but they wouldn't let me. This bitch kept putting paperwork in to keep me there, and they was keeping me there. One day, I just got these niggas just shot at me coming into the halfway house. This bitch gave me a funny ass grin. Like, you survived this one, nigga. The next one, you ain't gonna survive. So I asked the bitch one day, what the hell I got to do with you and the beef with these... With these how did you get in play with the beef with these niggas with me? And she was like, the money. She was like, the money. So the nigga named for Philly, I told him, you buy will get your bread back. Because if you don't get your bread back... I'm gonna end up stealing it anyway. So, I bring this mentality back home to Burlington. These niggas come punch and plow on it, bruh. I was too much for them. They were scared to death of me, bruh. Totally scared to death. Bro, when I tell you scared to death of me, bruh, <laughs> niggas was paying me to stay off their ass, bruh. I swear to God, bruh, I had about 20000 in one week for these niggas paying me. And I, I'm saying to myself, my grandma said, am I ever going to see you before these motherfuckers try to kill you? I'm like, grandma, I'm coming to Broughton this week and I'm going to make it to you. And I made it to my grandma. And I never forget, I'm on the block. I walk to the block and everybody that was on the corner just got up and left when I'm walking towards them. And I'm wondering why these niggas just up and leaving? Why these niggas up and leaving? So then I get what Sean do. So Sean see the reaction, so do see the reaction in the in, in, in mirror view, meaning that he's looking inside and I'm looking out. But he like, LG, you crazy as a mother. These motherfuckers ain't playing with you and you ain't playing. No, I'm not playing. So I need, what really calm me down is me getting with do. Real shit. If I don't get with do, I'll probably be dead right now. If I don't get with Sean do, I'll probably be dead, bro. Real shit. Because I was full throttle, didn't care. Me and a nigga fighting in the bank. Me and a nigga fighting in the gas station. These niggas, I don't even know, lad. I don't even know these niggas. 
But they ask you my name, LG, they take, try to take straight off. I ain't do nothing to these niggas, bro. But just a simple beef that I had from the feds, bro, and came all the way home. All because I stabbed a nigga in his face. But he deserved it. Real shit. And I ain't trying to sit here and brag and all that. But he deserved it. If a nigga you fucking with, he runs on you, leave you out to die, and got your knife. Somebody he gonna sharpen your knife up, but he runs and lock himself in the kitchen so he don't get harmed. And watches the whole thing from the kitchen counter door locked in. Bitch, I almost died. And you supposed to be my man. Nah, nigga, I'm killing you too now. I'm gonna get you too, nigga. I'm gonna get you. So when I catch this nigga, I ain't gonna front. I plunged on him. The niggas broke the fight up, and I ran my back, back, up, back up on him again and stabbed him. But I ain't gonna lie. I ain't know I hit him in the face. I fucked him up. He had to get face surgery. No bullshit. I put, and now you won't believe what I hit him with. I hit him with a toothbrush, the two toothbrushes that was melted together. No bullshit. Two toothbrushes that was melted together and molded together. I bust his ass. And we call it a face shot. I face shot at that nigga. What's going on guys, car livery. Guess what, my client's first car, guess what she got it with, car livery. We delivering the car to her, first day she got a license, first day she got her car. Got my license yesterday. I got my license yesterday and I got my car today. Thanks for car livery. And hey, yo, new book from Lakey out now. Go cop that. Yo, listen, man. I got some major dudes that be checking out my Instagram reels. You heard? My Instagram reel game is serious. So if you out there and you need to promote something, a business, a clothing brand, an artist, a new mixtape, new album, video, whatever it is you out there trying to push, you might want to be on these Instagram reels I'm throwing out here, baby. You already know I got the YouTube promo popping, but if you need that double dragon, that Instagram and YouTube promo, get at me. As always, holla at the bro Life Through Galleries if you need a photographer in New York. Classic magazine cover I was on. A lot of heavy hitters in this picture, that's a whole fact.